really about me, when I was Kathy's high school English teacher, she was one of those girls who was tough, always being offensive or defensive about something. And she hadn't been to class in a couple of weeks. When we met at the door of the classroom, first thing that she said was, don't have a heart attack or not miss. Well, where you been? I couldn't come to class because I had pink eye and my mom wanted me to go to the supermarket. The dog threw up and actually have asthma. But that's not the reason I didn't come to class. I was in a car accident and then I had a dentist appointment. Actually, I've been kind of lazy and I cut your class. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> and she looked me in the eye and I said, well, where have you been? They sure have some strong reefer. <laughs> she thought that was funny, but she let out a really loud yell, ow, because Vinny had come up from behind her and pinched her really hard. Ow! Hey, miss, you look great today. Thank you, Vinny. And what about me, huh? All I get's a pinch? Hey, Kathy, good to see you in school. The bell rang, and I ushered Kathy into the classroom, and as the door closed behind me, he pushed a piece of paper into my hand. That's for you, miss. It wasn't until the bell rang and the classroom emptied that I had the chance to pull that piece of paper out from under the attendance book. It was folded small and well creased as though read and reread. As soon as I opened it, I saw the title for the one whose name is my meaning. It was a love poem from Vinny. <laughs> for your kiss, I would scale the Himalayas, cross a score of Saharas. I would raise all the cities and build them anew, lay each brick with my hand. For your hand, I am forever yours. It was so full of hyperbole that it made me smile, but I was flattered. Vinny wasn't one of my students, but he had a class across the hall from mine. And every day during the passing between periods two and three, he'd work his way over to my side. I hadn't done anything to garner his attention. I was 23, and he was 18, with the body and carriage of a man. Wide shoulders, narrow hips, and a roughly shaven jaw. Hi, miss. Hello, Vinny. You look great today. Thank you, Vinny. And that would be all. He turned to talk to his friends. I gather up my students until the next day, during the passing between periods two and three, when I'd stand outside my classroom door and he'd work his way right toward me. Hadn't been like that when I was in school. No one ever noticed me at the back of the line. I was the tallest girl in the class. Mm, eventually, I was noticed because I was the one whose body matured first. I got picked on for that. I wore the same clothes as all the other girls, but I was the one who was picked on for my maturing body, first by the assistant principal, who thought that I dressed inappropriately. And then men on the street started to notice me. I was 11 or 12, and they'd call out from their cars, hey, girl, sit on my face. <laughs> what did it mean? It sounded so nasty. Once an old man drove up and beckoned to me for directions, I walked over to his car, and as he rolled down the window, I saw that something soft and embarrassing lay in his lap. <laughs> Why was this happening to me? Why couldn't I look like Barbara Margolis, the shortest girl in the class, who wore the shortest skirts and was never reprimanded for anything? Eventually, it would all make sense. And now that it did make sense, it still didn't. I was getting love poems from my students, for God's sake. I wasn't supposed to be attracting these boys. And still, I had to find a way to acknowledge that love poem from Vinny, find a way to thank him and reject him and flatter him at the same time. Thank you for the poem, Vinny. Oh, miss, you liked it, didn't you? I knew you did. I wrote it just for you. So even the right words were wrong, and none of the excuses that Kathy had were going to work for me this time. I can't accept your love poem because I have asthma. <laughs> but that's not the reason. The real reason is I'm a teacher and you're a student. Oh, but you liked it, miss, didn't you? And he took a step closer and touched the back of my hand. Didn't he know that I could be arrested for that touch? Or was he thinking about his math teacher, Jim Burns, who had married one of his old students? Or Howie Douglas, his, math te his science teacher, had done the same thing. Well, 
I decided to go to my supervisor for some advice. Gave him the poem. He read it smiling. You should be very flattered. Well, I don't really feel that way. I had to lie to him. I didn't want him to know that it was me and my body that were responsible for this. Don't worry. Just tell him you being a teacher and he being a student, everything's going to work out just fine. But I wasn't so sure about that. Look what had happened to Howie Burns and, and Jim Douglas. I was going into my classroom later that afternoon and I felt a tug on my sleeve. It was Vinny. Give me just a minute, miss. I called into my classroom, take out your notebooks, and I let the door close between myself and the students. No one was in the hallway, classes had started. I knew that this was the time for me to say something. I cleared my throat, but what was I gonna say? I noticed that the linoleum was dull under the fluorescent lighting. And then I saw a small, sharp spark from something that Vinny held in his hand. It was a ring with a diamond chip, and he held it out to me. This is for you. It was the first time I was proposed to. This is for you. I, I, I can't take it. Yes, you can. I bought it. For you. I, I, I can't take it. I, I, I can't accept a ring because I have to change the oil in my car, and I have to see an orthodontist. Actually, my supervisor is coming in to see me, but... The real reason is that I'm a teacher and you're a student. I'm not asking you to marry me yet. Just wear the ring. And he put it on my finger and disappeared across the hall. Vinny was tall and handsome with the body and carriage of a man. And I know that if he had been in my elementary school, he would have been one of the cute boys and I would have happily held his hand. But now that things made sense, they didn't. Later that afternoon, we were seated at a table in the library, and I held the ring that he had given me in the palm of my hand, and I said, since I'm a teacher and you're a student, and I put the ring down on the table and I pushed it toward him, and he finished the sentence. He said, nothing can happen between us, I know. And I was so relieved. But just for a moment, I worried that I would be unnoticed. But Vinny wasn't finished. He reached across the table and pushed the ring back toward me and said, good thing I graduate in June. And that's just the beginning of the story. <laughs>